Once in a while, we all need to get away from our usual environment and current surroundings. It does wonders for our mental health to see new things, meet new people and recharge our batteries with a new experience. Sometimes all it takes is a walk in the countryside in nature or through woodland, or even a day trip out to see a new place, explore and experience something different. Either way, a change is always good, whether it's a place close to or far from home. We recently went to explore the city of York. It's easy to get to by car, but we decided to let the train take the strain across the Pennines. So without further ado, let's see what York has to offer. If you like history, then York has to be on your bucket list and you certainly won't be disappointed. York has been conquered by Normans, Vikings and Romans, and all of them have left their mark. It lies at the meeting point of the River Ouse and the River Foss, and is very tiny in size compared to its American namesake, New York. It's the county town of Yorkshire and is easy to reach thanks to the rivers which made it a popular place for trade and industry and of course meant it was accessible by sea. That all came to an end in 1997 and today the rivers are only used for leisure. York is famous for its cathedral, York Minster, which entitles it to be called a city. The cathedral is a Grade 1 listed building. The first record of a church on the site dates back to 627 AD, and it really is a sight to behold. There is an entrance fee to pay to the tour inside, which is a bit steep, but this goes to the upkeep, since at the moment there are no grants awarded for the preservation, and it costs £30,000 a day to keep this national treasure in pristine condition. The Normans, under William the Conqueror, built two castles in York. Clifford's Tower stands on the site of one of them, and the York Castle Museum on the other. The Viking history in York can be found at the Jorvik Centre. Jorvik is the Danish name for York, and if you visit in February, you can experience the Viking Festival and see a reenactment of the invasion. If you like chocolate, then York is definitely the place for you. York is the home of Roundtree, which merged with Mackintosh, famous for fruit pastels, quality street, after eights, lion bars, and of course, Yorkie bars. The global company Nestle took over in 1991, and their headquarters are in Switzerland. Terry's Chocolate Company was founded in York in 1767. Terry's Chocolate Orange and Terry's All Gold became worldwide hits in the chocolate industry. However, the company changed ownership several times and is now owned by Eurosio, which produced the chocolate oranges from their facilities in Strasbourg. You can find out about the history of chocolate in this tasty tour, and there are many mouth-watering sweets and chocolate shops to be found all over York. You'll find wonderfully locally grown produce at the market, along with local family butchers and amazing local craftsmen and artists with scenes from around York. Restaurants are in abundance in York for whatever food takes your fancy. Pie shops, pub grub and even local delights can be found such as a complete roast dinner served in a giant Yorkshire pudding. When in Rome, do as the Romans, or eat as the Romans in this particular case, and very tasty it was too. A stroll along the Shambles is an absolute must, especially for Harry Potter fans. You feel instantly transported to Diagon Alley, and it really does have a magical feel of witches and wizards about it. Of course, no home of wizardry would be complete without black cats. Well, 22 of them to be precise. The Black Cat Trail will take you all over the city to spot the cats, just like a real treasure hunt. Speaking of potions, York is famous for its brewery and you can try the locally made tipples in various pubs that retain the historic feel and ambience of the city. Guy Fawkes was born in York. This guy, if you pardon the pun, plotted to blow up the Houses of Parliament with gunpowder in 1605. He was caught and hung for his crime, but the Brits remember him every year on the 5th of November by lighting bonfires and letting off fireworks. He could be classed as a hero or a villain of York, depending on your point of view. 
Dick Turpin, on the other hand, is a definite villain. He used to ride on the road from York to London on his horse, Black Bess, robbing carriages and crying, stand and deliver. A little like Robin Hood, only he kept the spoils for himself and didn't share them with the poor. The much acclaimed and much loved actress, Dame Judi Dench, was born in York. She definitely belongs on the hero list, along with the poet, W.H. Auden. He was born in York and wrote the beautiful poem called Funeral Blues, Stop All the Clocks, which featured at the funeral in the film Four Weddings and Funeral. There's so much to see and do in York, and it can't really be done in a day. But don't worry, there are some great places to stay so you can take in all of what York has to offer. You'll be marching up the hills and you'll be marching down the hills, just like the grand old Duke of York.